have a say about who is going to be the Republican Party nominee for president. Yes. <clears throat> so this is really important, and uh, it, it hasn't, you know, I have never been to a caucus, but uh, he's telling us all these different things that, that we need to know in order to participate in this caucus. So uh, this is really great. And your phone number, I'll give that again, 584-7111. Yes, that's right. What, what are the times you're usually there? Well, um, I'm usually, the, our office tries to be open between 9 and 5. A lot of times I'll have meetings that will kind of take, us, take me away from the office. So like I said, if I don't answer, just leave me a message and I will call you back. You can email me uh, to, I'll give my email address, Okay. Uh, ed at louisvillegop.com. Um, that's ed at louisvillegop.com. Well, it sounds like the uh, Republican Party is making great strides. Yeah, I mean, we're doing everything we can to contact as many voters as we can to promote this absentee yeah. ballot, to promote the, the locations, because ultimately, you know, making this shift from primary to caucus yeah. is a very difficult, it is difficult, and it's difficult for the party, it's difficult for the voters, uh, and it comes, you know, at an expense to the party, but we feel that it's important to have our voices heard, but we also think it's very important to make sure that every voter, that we can tell, that we tell, that, you know, this is what's going to happen, that they have the opportunity to have their voices heard, especially this year, you know, with this, uh, very close presidential election, you know, it's it's really very crucial. You know? Well, now, let me just say this. Here I am. I'm, uh, I, I know where I'm supposed to be. <clears throat> and uh, I, get in, uh, I get in the car and go over to where my location is on March 5th. And uh, I have to be there about 10 a.m. Uh, uh, let me see, 10 a.m., mm -hmm. and... Uh, or you can get there between 10 and 4 at any time. Oh, really? Yes, any time between 10 and 4. And you can stay a little bit and visit with these tables. And Oh, you yeah, know, that's right. Maybe we can even get, give, give out tote bags like the fair, you know, and, and have people, you know, grab things from each table. I, I don't know. But, uh, or, you, and then once you're done with that, you can just vote. Or you can go straight through and just vote. You can, it can be... A five-minute thing, or it can be a half an hour. Oh, really? Yeah. So here I am. I walk in the door at, uh, what is it, Zachary Taylor? Yeah. And uh, on uh, Westport Road. Mm -hmm. And I walk in the door, and what am I going to see, and what am I going to do? Well, the first thing that you'll see will be tables. Yeah. There will be tables set up. Because we have nine locations and not 623 like we do on primary day, we're going to have a lot of volunteers who will be doing sign-in so we can avoid excessively long lines. So at that particular location, just about you're going to have just about one volunteer to every letter in the alphabet, pretty much. Um, oh, yeah. So you so, walk in, you get in the yeah. line for S or whatever yes. it is. So you, you'll go straight over the line for S. There'll be a sign. It'll say you know, S. You'll go over there. You know, you'll give your name and you'll yeah. show your ID. You'll sign the book. And then you will go into the, and I don't know exactly how it will be set up from there, like in terms of if it's over or behind. But you will go yeah. to the next area. There will be tables. They'll tell you um, where to go. Yeah, you'll be directed. And then, you know, you can visit a little with those tables, or you can just go straight back to the voting area, vote, and cast your ballot. Or come back out and talk with the tables. That's right. That's right. The ballots are, are secret. So they're going to be paper ballots. They will be secure. We will be doing ballot tabulation um, that day by machine in Jefferson just County. Just like we always do when we vote. Well, it'll be a little different. You're probably going to put your ballot when you're finished in a, like a sealed box of some sort. But three times during that day, we have a special group of four people, the, the chairman of each location. Each location has been appointed a chairman. Okay. And then three volunteers specially designated and trained to do ballot tabulation. And they will take it and scan it into a machine. Yeah. And it will then, you know, make a copy of it, but also tabulate the votes. And then it will be put in um, in a secure location where it can't be unsealed. Um, so the ballot security was a very important concern that we had initially. And, uh, you know, the Republican Party of Kentucky has made a tremendous effort to make sure that ballot tabulation is done 
correctly and securely and safely. Yeah, just Definitely. like voting at a general election. Absolutely. I, I would encourage everyone, if there are tables uh, and groups that are around, uh, you know, this is a good time for everyone to get to meet other people and get in, plugged in and tuned in with not just the Republican Party, um, but we'd love for you to get plugged in with the Republican Party. But, you know, the NRA groups or the, the Right to Life or the American Family Association or whatever group decides to come in and, and set up a table yeah. in each of the locations. And it's a good time to learn more information. And it's also a good time to meet your candidate for state house or state senate uh, or metro council or whatever. Oh, there, um, the elected officials yes. are liable to be there. And it's a good time to talk to to voters, too. Yeah. Um, you know, so that we have non-locations, and I would encourage you to get non-volunteers and set up a table at each location and send them out with, you know, Hey, that's material. a good idea. So let me write that Give down. Give them a sign-in sheet so that Nine you can get, tables. you know, phone numbers, email addresses, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a party-building exercise. It really yeah. is. And <clears throat> it's a... Like I said, I think it's a proud day to be a Republican. Well, now, is the Democrat Party going to do anything like this? No. Well, boy, I you're all taking a big step forward. Yeah, well, and to be fair, I don't think the Democratic Party anticipated this kind of a close primary election on their side like they have. So we kind of saw that coming, and, you know, well, yeah. here's what, here we are. But uh, it's, it's <clears throat> very exciting. And uh, I think this is uh, much better than the old-fashioned primaries because... Um, you know, we'll, our primary or our caucus uh, will be, you know, before it's all over. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so that'll give each each one of us to have an important part to say whether, uh, let me see if I can think of some of the candidates you got. Uh, and, and all of those people, actually, we have 12 candidates left in the race. 11 of them have qualified to be on our ballot. Okay. And... Let me see if I can name them off. Uh, Donald Trump, Jeb Bush, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, Ben Carson, Carly Fiorina, Mike Huckabee, Rick Santorum, Chris Christie, John Kasich. They I have, think you did great. Well, I think Rand Paul was the one I forgot. <laughs> okay, okay. But um, they've all qualified for our ballot, um, so they will be on the ballot. That's not to say they'll still be in the race at the time. You know, I think the next month, um, you know, will determine these first four, yeah, you know. yeah. Caucuses. Well, now see if uh, our listeners are, uh, you know, probably have some idea who they thought ought to be the next president in the United yeah. States. So it's tremendous to get yes. out there and it's in your hands, in my hands, in your hands. Yes, absolutely. We all are going to be able to have an important role in deciding who the next president of the United States is. Yes. And uh, in the past, we didn't feel like we had yeah. that important a role because everything was decided before we had a chance to vote on it. That's right. And it's important also to to say that delegates in the state will actually be allocated by percentage. And there's a minimum threshold of 5%. And that's important because in every other state, the threshold is actually higher. So, for example, Texas, the minimum threshold is 20%. So let's say that Ted Cruz gets 21% and Donald Trump gets 21%. Well, they split those delegates evenly. But if Ted Cruz gets 21% and Donald Trump gets 19%, he gets all 155 of those delegates. In Texas? In Texas. So here we have 46 delegates. We have, ours is the lowest minimum threshold of any um, state, and we're trying to, you know, foster an atmosphere of competitiveness. To yeah. To bring those candidates here to say, you know, you have an opportunity. And I think in Kentucky there will be candidates who will likely not get delegates any other state, out of any other state, but they could get it out of Kentucky because we, you know, we're going to actually let our Republican voters have their voices heard in, yeah. a, in a sense. And I'm not knocking, you know, what those other states are doing. That's, uh, I suspect that the way those other states allocate their delegates will help move the process along quite a bit. But it is very important to say that we, we are going to have, you know, your voice will be heard, the delegates will be allocated, in that fashion, 5% is the minimum threshold, so whoever gets more than 5% will get delegates from Kentucky at the convention. I should say, so Kentucky gets 26... 46. 46. 46. 46 delegates. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, But the, the particular person that's going to be the delegate won't be uh, decided till March 19th. Well, it will be, they will 
the initial step to begin that oh, process. Oh, yeah, be, it'll be after that. So it'll be after that uh, at district and state <clears throat> conventions in April. That is when um, those delegates will be elected by um, by the Republican delegates to those conventions. In, so, uh, for Kentucky. For Kentucky, yes. The uh, state convention, is that the right word? Yes. State will convention. be in April. Will be in April. And when will the uh, National Republican Convention be? The National Republican National Convention convenes in <clears throat> Cleveland. Uh, I believe it is July 19th is the first day, July 19th to the 21st. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of important important work will be done there in terms of uh, not just nominating our candidate for president and vice president, but the platform and the rules of the party as well. Right. Um, it's important, I think, that I would like to convey to anyone who listens that a caucus like this is really, it's going to be a party building exercise, but the real party building exercise will be after we get a nominee, because that will be the most important thing from the Republican party standpoint. Um, you know, you could say there are two things that, you know, two things I would say you can't, you can't deny. First is our country is in a bit of a mess. And second is, the only way to change direction is to have a Republican president of the United States. So whether that person is Donald Trump or Jeb Bush or Ted Cruz or Rand Paul, that person is better than Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. And so coalescing around that nominee yeah. and, and all backing him up is is really the most important thing. And there is no better party building exercise than electing a Republican president on November the 8th. Well, and then if they do go to the legislative district mass meeting mm -hmm. on March 19th, mm -hmm. then they can have a say, theoretically, yes. in the uh, party platform, say if they're a yeah. pro-life uh, plank in the platform yeah. or Pro marriage plank in the platform, which or, I don't. I will tell you, I don't think that uh, we are in danger of losing those planks. Uh, this, in maybe in 1996, I think was the last time we really had a, a convention fight. But I think um, I, fi I find that when I talk, to oh, you mean here in Louisville? Oh no, mean, I mean nationwide. Nationwide, yeah. Okay, I think you know when I talk to Republicans who are Tea Party or establishment or whatever. They disagree about, about a lot of things, but I, most of them are really pro-life. Um, yeah, and I, I remember the days when yeah. that was a question, <laughs> but that was many years ago. Yeah. I think you're right. I think most uh, Republicans are pro-life, and the platform is pro-life. Which I'm glad about. I mean, I think that's yeah. very proud to be a part of a party. And on the other yeah. hand, the Democrat platform is pro-abortion. Yes, and they don't, their platform, I think that's a... It's an interesting thing to look at and read the two party platforms because Absolutely. You know, they didn't mention God last time yeah. on the platform. So Yeah. So uh yeah, I've watched that on television. In fact we have a DVD of it. We'll be able to give it away. Let's see, are we running out of time? We're out of time. Oh. Well. Sorry. Okay. Uh Byron Fisher from the uh Republican Party here in Jefferson County. We appreciate you being Thank here. You for having and we me. look forward to tune in again next week for the rest of the news.